Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to our public hearings committee meeting for April 5th, 2022. I'd like to remind everyone that our meetings are web streamed and televised, and I would ask that you ensure your phones are on silent mode and mute yourself when not speaking. And of course, remember to unmute yourself when speaking. For those attending virtually, please keep your camera on and please use the Microsoft Teams raise hand feature icon to be called upon and to remove it after it is after you're finished speaking. And with that, I will open call the meeting to order. Um, and I did make a little oversight uh, earlier, so I will ask our uh, deputy clerk uh, to introduce our new member of the team. here. Thank you through you, uh, deputy mayor to committee. Uh, I'd like to welcome Julie Ellis to uh, Norfolk County. Uh, she recently started with us about a month ago, and uh, she's a uh, quick study, and uh, hope you can all meet her soon. She's uh, just to the behind. She might be not in your direct eyesight, but uh, give her give, give her a welcome uh, when you have the chance. Thanks. Okay, thank you, and welcome aboard. So I now officially open the public meetings held under the Municipal Act and the Planning Act and County Policy. Please be advised that to preserve your right of appeal to the Ontario Land Tribunal, you are required to make comments or provide written submissions prior to the passage of a bylaw. It's important to note that no final decisions are being made on these matters today. These meetings are to allow the public to provide initial comments and further reports will come forward at a future date. Any declarations of pecuniary interest? Seeing none. Um, could I have a mover and seconder to approve the agenda as a pre uh, presented? Councillor Michelli, Councillor Taylor, all in favor? That is carried. Uh, first item is staff report CD 22 027, uh, Zen NPL 2022 034. An application has been received to amend the zoning bylaw to rezone the subject lands from Hamlet Commercial Zone to Hamlet Residential zone to facilitate the conversion of an existing structure to residential. Uh, Fabian, Sarah, will you present this please? Thank you. Good afternoon. Through the chair, uh, I've prepared the following information report before you. So the application was submitted by Martin Reith and Leslie Watson, and the application is to change the zoning on the property from the commercial Hamlet to Hamlet residential. Uh, presentation. Oh, ah, see. Forgot about that. We'll just be sharing the screen with the presentation. Pretty soon you'll be able to stand right in front of us and, and do it in person, right? Get rid of this technology stuff. Uh -huh. Small, small technical issue. It's not letting me share the. Uh... Through the chair, if our clerk could assist us with uh, the share screen option is not working on our end or if they have the presentation and could uh, cycle through it for us, if that's possible. Otherwise, we can quickly verbally do it. Looks to me they're ahead of the game here. So. We're uh, working on it over here. Should have it up shortly. Okay, we have it up on the screen here, so. Through you, Mr. Chair. Sorry, we had a little technical issue here. We got kicked out of the team. Oh, well, you're um, back on our screen, so. Excellent. That's good. Yeah, if you could just prompt the, 
the clerk to uh, forward uh, to the right page, then uh, we can carry on. Okay. Uh, can you forward to the next slide? Thank you. So the property is located at 360, 3695 Highway 59 in Andes Corners. Uh, the surrounding land uses are predominantly agricultural with residential uh, single family homes as the main uses. And on the corner there at Andes Corner, there is a commercial, I believe it's a restaurant as well. Uh, the official plan designation for the area is Hamlet for the specific property and for the zoning, it's Hamlet commercial area. Next slide. Uh, the development proposal is essentially to rezone the commercial lands from Hamlet commercial to Hamlet residential. It's the purpose is to convert the existing structure to, uh, in exclusively for residential uses to convert the storefront to a living space. Next slide. So the uh, reports that were submitted as part of the application was a proposed building sketch. So the building already exists and no further studies were requested. Uh, the agency comments that were provided was zoning uh, requ requested to see a site sketch showing the distance to the buildings from all property lines to determine the setbacks of the Hamlet residential zone. Uh, finance has indicated that the application is to have a negative impact on assessment growth and tax revenue as commercial taxes are higher than residential. The conversion would more accurately reflect the current use of the property. And in terms of public input, there hasn't been any public input that's been received at this time. Next slide. Um, so the next steps are for to hear the public hearing for consideration. Um, and the required revisions, the site sketch has been provided to staff and is in the circulation process as we speak. And thank you for your time. Oh, and sorry, I'd like to add that Andrew Sinclair is also available on Teams to answer any questions. Okay, thank you, Fabian. Uh, any questions for staff from Council? Councilor Vanandry. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and through you to staff. Um, I'd like to start off by saying um, this particular property in past years has always had some sort of uh, store or uh, business location in it. Um, only the last few years has it has it not that it's um, uh, been residential and uh, not a problem there. Uh, my concern or question is when we start changing properties from residential commercial to strictly residential, um, are, do we have very many of those types of properties left in the area? In this particular hamlet, we have, of course, the restaurant or Andy's Corners, in Andy's Corners, the restaurant. Um, and we always had like a sports shop or something across the road in that particular property. And uh, it was brought to my attention that I do admit it hasn't been there in a while. But um, have we, are we losing a lot of those particular properties? And, and losing, in my mind, a bit of opportunity for small business use. Through through the chair, um, there there aren't many uh, commercial properties within that hamlet specifically. Um, in terms of the conversion of commercial properties to residential, uh, it, it is rather uncommon to see that. Um, usually, it's dealt with other avenues. Um, in terms of Sorry, I forget what your last question was. My concern question was uh, the number. How many have we got left and the opportunities that we have? Um, if we were to look at it and eliminate another one, what does it take to come back to a commercial lot? So in, in terms of the numbers uh, currently, so as you had indicated there, this, this was the property that uh, was previously the, the sports goods store. Um, in terms of the ones in the immediate area, the commercial properties, it was it's only the restaurant in the corner of Andy's Corners there. Um, for a property to go from residential to commercial, they would essentially have to do a zoning bylaw amendment to allow those uses if they want to do, um, like have a similar type of business on the property, they would have to go through a zoning amendment to allow the use. Yeah, through the chair, through the chair, just to, to supplement that a little bit, it, it is a consideration for this application, uh, and you want to we want to consider the the current status of the hamlet, but also potentially the future status of the hamlet. Should there be any growth in the future, 
now once a commercial zoning is established or, or the same thing for industrial for that matter um, it does provide opportunities and flexibility for the future once it's gone it is more difficult to uh, to re-establish so it's definitely a consideration for this particular file uh, how much potential commercial um, support zoning could there be within a, a hamlet area right uh, that that uh, is my only concern of the property and and the area and opportunities for individuals to want to start a small business so um i do have a little bit of a concern because when you do look at the the actual property and facade it is has always been a a bit of a business building but anyway it is what it is and um, they are requiring a change thank you And for one, anyone who's not aware, uh, I highly recommend a trip out to Andy's Corners to the uh, chip wagon and uh, the burgers and poutine are fantastic out there. And I see the thumbs up from the local councillor as well. So any other questions for staff? Seeing none, thank you, uh, Fabian. And uh, we have the applicant's agent uh, registered, uh, Andrea Sinclair of MHBC. Um, will you be presenting anything or just here to answer questions or? Good afternoon. I don't have a, a formal slideshow presentation, just a few brief comments, and I'm certainly here to answer any questions. Um, in terms of the question that was just asked, I uh, just wanted to confirm that there's no change being made to the official plan designation, so it'll continue to be designated Hamlet, which will continue to recognize a broad range of uses, including commercial. So if there was ever a desire in the future to go back to commercial, uh, we're, we're not changing that overall planned function. Um, there's also the opportunity, sometimes through minor variants, to add selective uses. And um, if the Hamlet residential zone that's being proposed does not permit, say, a home-based business, that's something we could talk to staff about possibly adding in the bylaw. Um, the concern of the owner uh, who's been using the building as a residential business or residential business, sorry, as a residential dwelling is that um, lenders are becoming increasingly uh, more challenged with providing mortgages, especially to provide a residential mortgage on a commercial zoned property. So there is that um, more, uh, I'd call it technical consideration where uh, the owner has an interested buyer in the property, but that interested buyer may not be able to secure a mortgage when it still has a commercial zone. So that's um, in large part why this zone change is necessary. Um, but I, I would suggest that if in the future, um, because the actual designation is not changing, if there is a need in the future or desire for someone to do a commercial business, there is ways um, either as um, as Fabian mentioned through zone change or possibly through variants that uh, some commercial uses could be added back to the site. Um, so that's everything. Um, the zone that's being requested is the same zone of all immediate surrounding properties. So it is uh, the predominant zone in this area and I'm here to answer any other questions that council may have. Thank you. That make you feel more comfortable, Councillor Van den Drieschi? No. Any uh, questions for the applicant's agent? Councillor Van den Drieschi? <laughs> Thank you, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, you make it sound so simple that uh, our staff could go ahead and make changes like that, but as I heard um, that from staff, that it is not quite as simple as all that, but um, it, just a reminder that that location has had some pretty good businesses over the years, so it will be uh, sadly missed as a bit of a business there. So just a comment, thank you. They're looking for questions, but uh, Councillor Columbus. Mr. Chair, I do believe what the planner, the applicant's planner mentioned would constitute uh, support through a home industry or a home occupation is what she was trying to target, I believe. Seeing no more questions, thank you very much, Andrea. Um, thank you. Is there any other members of the public uh, that want to speak to this report? Do we have any on deck, uh, Mr. Deputy Clerk? Okay, we're seeing none. Um, 
Would anyone like to move the staff recommendation or propose an alternative? Councillor Martin moves. Councillor Michelli seconds. Any discussion? All in favor? That is carried. Okay, thank you, everyone. Next item 4.2, the staff report CD 22-029, ZNPL 2022-013. An application has been received to change the zoning from urban residential type one, uh, R1-B with a holding provision to urban residential type two and R2 to permit six semi-detached units. Uh, Mohammed Alam, will you present this report? You're on uh, mute, Mohammed. Sorry about that. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, and uh, through you to the Council. This is a zoning bylaw amendment application for six semi detached units at the north side of Mechanic Street in Auburn uh, area of Waterford. The subject lands are a part of a larger lot of 2.56 acres. Once the zoning well amendment is completed, this piece of land will be severed from the larger lots uh, to create individual semi-detached units. The remaining land is planned for a townhouse condominium development, which is not a part of this uh, application. The subject lands are surrounded by predominantly low residential developments. Um, and with some future medium to high density residential development proposal at the south side of the Mechanic Street. There are also few commercial uses at the east side of the subject lands. The designation of this land is urban residential and currently zoned as urban residential type 1B um, with a holding. The holding was imposed in 2001 through a zoning by law amendment to ensure appropriate drainage and stormwater management. Currently, the proposal is changing the zoning from R1B to R2 to facilitate six semi detached units. No special provision um, are requested. And uh, that means that all zoning requirements of R2 will be maintained. As you can see in the slide deck, uh, the site um, with the application signage. And there are three semi detached building with six townhouse units. We received various reports and supporting documents, including a planning justification report, a traffic impact study, a functional servicing report. The traffic study recommended no traffic improvement will be required for this proposal. Um, we are yet to receive any technical comments, which will be provided in the recommendation report. And we did not receive any public input as of yet. That's everything for this application. I believe um, Agent uh, Valley Engineering is attending the meeting, but I'll be happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you, Mohammed. Any questions for staff? Seeing none. Well, we've got one. Oh, sorry, Councillor Huff. Or... Thank you, Chair Van Passen. Through you to Mohammed. Um, we've been obviously going through COVID for the last two years, and traffic has been at a diminished capacity. Um, and things are starting to pick up now. I notice uh, traveling the the streets of Waterford. When was this traffic study done? So I believe the traffic study done is. 20 to at the end of 2021. Uh, this is for six semi units, units, but uh, staff will review uh, as a comprehensive study for the whole development. So I, I believe the technical uh, review will include that part also. And um, if any question, if any answer from Scott, uh, he may also answer about that. Uh, thanks, thanks, Mohammed. Uh, through the chair, uh, yeah, the, uh, the traffic impact study was uh, was dated uh, for October of 
And can you tell me what time of day that was done at? Uh, through the chair, uh, they were done at the, the peak hours during the a.m. and uh, p.m. peak hours uh, is when traffic counts were, were completed. Okay, thank you. Well, I see we have the uh, the applicant's agent, uh, Scott Polandri from G. Douglas Valley Limited. Would you like to make a presentation or are you just here to answer questions? Mr. Chair, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, I have no material to present. Uh, I think Mohammed's uh, presentation provided a wholesome review of the project overall. Um, just in terms of some general points, um, this is a very compatible uh, form of residential development in a predominantly residential area. Um, it should be noted that uh, the proposed uh, lot fabric and uh, form of development is similar uh, across the road uh, on uh, Norfolk Street as well. Um, other than that, uh, I'm uh, able to an answer any questions that uh, council or, or the general public may have. Any questions for the applicant's agent? Councilor Columbus? Yes, to the agent. Uh, this just a small parcel of land, 0.5 acres or 0.2 hectares that's being utilized here for these six units, but what about the, the remaining lands to the east? They are owned by the same applicant. What is the, it's owned R4, I see. What is the plan going forward with respect to that rest of that property? So with the, yeah, sorry, uh, through the chair, uh, the plan for the uh, the rest of the property is, is still underdeveloped, under development in terms of uh, more detailed design, uh, looking at sort of the site layout. Uh, we're still working with the Committee of Adjustment to, uh, to readjust uh, the lot fabric. Um, so more detailed design will be brought forward uh, in terms of what that uh, development concept will look like on that parcel. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, uh, does anyone want to move the staff recommendation or propose an alternative? Mr. Huffman moves, Councillor Taylor seconds. Any discussion? All in favor? That is carried. Next report is CD 22-030, 28 TPL 2022-15, and ZNPL 2022-16. An application has been received to approve a draft plan of subdivision to develop 51 residential lots, including 26 semi-detached units and 25 street townhouse units. And Mohammed, they have you listed again to present this report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through Mr. Chair to the Council, the development proposal includes a draft plan of subdivision and the zoning bylaw application to approve 51 residential units. The subject lands are located in Waterford, Waterford at the southern side of Waterford Pond and at the southern side along Norfolk Street. The surrounding areas are generally low, resident, low, low residential low density residential with single detached and semi detached units. There is a historical industrial site at the west side along Waterford Trail. There is another future medium density development is currently under process at the north side across uh, Nicholls Street. The subject lands are designated as urban residential and zoned as development. Development zones generally considered as future development site within the urban boundary. As you see in the slide deck, the land is currently vacant and ready for development. The proposal is for 51 residential lots, including 26 semi-detached and 25 townhouse units. There are two phases identified in the proposal. Phase one includes three townhouse blocks along Norfolk Street and the construction of Nicholls Street Road widening. And this will be constructed by the developer. Phase two includes an extension of Temperance Street from the east side into the development. And uh, this will create a kind of elbow-shaped internal public road connecting uh, the two 
existing street, Nicholas Street and Temperance Street. The zoning amendment will change the zoning from development zone to R2 and R4 for the semi-detached and townhouse dwellings respectively. We have received various reports and supporting documents. Among them, we have a planning justification report, functional servicing report, traffic impact study, and archaeological assessment, stage one and two. The site is heavily disturbed and uh, no archaeological evidence is found through the assessment. We did not receive any formal technical comments yet, but um, development engineering provided some concerns regarding the proposed storm water runoff on um, Nicol Street. So a further detail of technical issues and any revisions will be provided in the recommendation report. We received one public comments recently. And the concern is about potential impact of flow of um, wild animals and biodiversity through the site. And it is mentioned that uh, this may impact their micro farm activities in um, in their neighboring lots. So the next step is reviewing the technical comments and potential revisions uh, before staff will provide a recognition report. And that's everything from me. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mohammed. Any questions from for staff? Uh, Councillor Huffman. Thank you, Chair Van Passen. Through you to Mohammed. Um, if it's left at development zone D, what what can be built there? What can be used? So, Mr. Chair, to the councillor, uh, if it is a development zone and no zoning by law amendment is, I mean, applied, then in the development zone, um, the owner can only build one single detached unit. And um, this is, I mean, through the through the uh, review of official plan, generally um, staff identify future development potential lands which are designated as development. So when there is a development zone, we generally consider that in future it will have some developments. But if there is no change happens, then it will be a single detached. Okay, so if the if the zoning is not changed, a single detached home would be built on that property. That would be it. Correct. Yep. Okay. Um, and again, um, my other question is again looking at um, that is a very narrow street down there, both Nickel and Temperance Street West. Um, again, just concerned about the traffic study time when that was done. So for this one also, it it has been done in 2021. I cannot recall the exact date, but I believe uh, agent from IBI group is there who can okay. provide some more further details. I still okay, chair, I, so I, I can answer that question. Um, so the traffic impact uh, study it was completed in August uh, 24th of 2021. You happen to know what day of the week that was? Um, uh, sorry, August, August 24th. August 24th. Yes, yeah, so that, that was when it was signed off by the um, by this uh, consultant. OK, do you know the times of the the day of the week or the times? Yes. So they did the uh, peak AM and the peak uh, PM uh, hours of the day, so the morning and the afternoon. Um, but I also should note too that there uh, there is a proposed um, subdivision just north of the subject property. And it's actually the same uh, traffic consultant that completed a traffic impact study for that um, uh, development to the north back in 2018. So he's had experience with both the land to the north and uh, the proposed application. Okay, thank you. Through the chair to, or through the deputy mayor to committee, uh, August 24th was a Tuesday. Linda, did you have a question or? Yeah, Councillor uh, Rabbits and we have Councillor Martin, so Councillor Martin. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm just seeking clarification, Mohammed. The, the parcel of land zoned as development would permit for for um, one for single detached dwellings, N not one single detached dwelling or did I? Misunderstand. Through uh, 
attached dwellings is what I'm what I'm getting at roughly on that parcel. Through Mr. Chair, uh, to Councillor Martin, uh, the permitted use in the development zone, I'm going to list out the items that are in the zoning bylaw, includes um, bunkhouse dwelling, which is a single detached dwelling. That means when it mentions single detached, it does not apply for any I, other kind I of can stop, uh, dwelling. I can stop you there, Mohammed. I did. I understood that part. My question is the density, like how many single detached homes would be permitted on there? Just the one? That's the part that I'm clarifying. I just did, one. Oh, just one. Um, my other question would be through to um, the the uh, a developer, I guess. The the townhomes and the semi detached. Uh, are there any plans to create uh, separate dwelling units inside these homes? Has has that the plans progressed in any way, shape, or form to um, you know allow for additional income opportunities for the individuals that purchase the home, granny suites for generational uh, families and so on. Uh, through the chair, so um, I should also clarify too. If, that if I could, uh, Council Martin, we're asking questions of our staff. Then we'll have uh, the, the applicant's agent do their presentation. And if you could hold that question till then, please. Uh, Council Rabbit. Thank you through you. Uh, my question to staff was regarding um, our active transportation plan or sidewalks in this area. Um, just looking at the schematics and it's a little difficult to tell if some of the lines are indicating um, easements or boundaries or if there's going to be infrastructure going in. We have some comments back for staff, particularly on uh, Nickel Street. Are there any sidewalks going in? There is an uh, through Madam Chair um, to the councillor. There is an existing sidewalk at the other side of the road. Um, I mean, at the north side of Nicholas Street. Uh, with this development, they also have to provide sidewalk. Uh, I, I know this is a schematic, but during the detailed design review, we'll confirm that there is a sidewalk throughout the development along the main street, and also it will confirm that it will be connected with the existing sidewalk. Okay, thank you and through you a uh, follow up question. We did have agency comments about um, drainage being problematic. Can we have staff perhaps expand on that or are we just to take that at face value? Is it we're getting more information back with a subsequent report or you know, what can you tell us about the drainage at this juncture? To Madam Chair to the councillor, um, we had um, discussion internally with the staff. We didn't receive any technical formal comments yet, but they provided some concern about the proposal, how the stormwater is proposed to be connected with, uh, uh, with the main street and the stormwater runoff will go to the main uh, street, which is in this case, uh, Norfolk Street. Uh, but we'll get more details when the staff comments will come. Okay, thank you. And just my, my last um, thought is, uh, it would be nice in the next report if we had some information about capital, uh, if we're expecting to be spending any significant dollars on either of those major arteries, um, and if that would align with the proposed construction plan of the subdivision. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Van Andrishi. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and through you uh, to staff. Um, I'm hearing there's a lot of development going to occur or there's lots of opportunity for development in the Waterford area. Um, the services, the, the water and sewer connections, do we have any anticipated concerns or are we pretty secure in saying that lots of development can occur in the Waterford area? So Madam Chair, uh, to councillors, a very important question. Uh, I think, uh, uh, we are also um, concerned about that and the development engineering and planning departments are working on that, considering significant number of development proposals coming in that area. Um, at this point, we don't have information about whether all those units can be allocated through the capacity, uh, but uh, based on the current applications on file, as we know, uh, we can see that there are capacities, but again, capacity will be allocated during the agreement uh, stage. Um, until then, we cannot confirm that it is allocated. Okay, thank you. Councillor Columbus. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, 
I know that the province is pushing for infilling and higher density housing. And with that comes some problems that I've noticed in past developments where we've had these uh, semi-detached uh, homes and townhouses. And that the problem is parking. Because there's such narrow lots and you sure you've got a requirement for two parking spots, one in the garage and one in the driveway. But if somebody puts a side, if the developer puts a sidewalk there, sometimes that uh, encumbers the parking in the in the driveway. And if you put the sidewalk right close to the curb, then there's a snow clearing issue. So then if people park on the road, which is a good example, we've got one in, in Delhi like that. It's clear. It really creates a real snow clearing problem for winter works. So I just want to make sure, uh, Mohammed, that in this development, and I think we've talked about it in the past, can you make it such that the parking is adequate with, with the fact that you still have to limit it, you require two parking spots for each unit? What, what kind of a plan have you got going forward to ensure that there's adequate parking in this development? So we don't repeat what's happened in other areas of Norfolk. Through Madam Chair uh, to Council Columbus. Um, <clears throat> in this case, uh, the applicant did not ask for any relief on parking. So uh, the parking will be as per the requirement. Um, and also the lot frontage in some way related to parking on the road. And um, as long as we can maintain the adequate lot frontage, then I believe uh, there will be space to provide uh, public parking on the street as well. So we'll look into that. You're telling me then that in the final end, you're going to be watching carefully over the, the parking situation, I guess. Correct. Okay, thank you, uh, Mohammed. I, I see no more questions for staff, so we will go to the applicant's agents. Um, will you be presenting a report? There we go. Oh, I should remind you, you got five minutes. So. Yeah, for sure. And, thank uh, you very much. If I could, uh, could you introduce yourself? Because I don't want to screw up your last name. Uh, <laughs> Trying to read it off the deck here. So. Not a problem. Okay, so um, you know, my name is Christian Simonidis. It's a Greek last name um, and the T silent. And I am a planner with IBI Group representing our client, uh, Berardi Construction Inc. I'm also joined by Douglas Stewart, who is also on this call, uh, who is, uh, works for IBI as well and is the project manager for uh, this application. So today I'm just going to be going through some of the details, which uh, I know Mohammed went through just previously, um, as well as some uh, justification. So. Uh, the applicant is proposing a total of 51 residential dwelling units, 25 of which will be um, street townhouses located on blocks 14 through 19 in the uh, northwest, uh, northeast corner rather. And then there will be 26 semi-detached dwelling units uh, located on lots 1 through 13. And in order to implement uh, the uh, official plan designation, uh, the applicant is requesting to rezone the lands from D to R2 um, as well as R4. So the R2 will be for lots 1 through 13 uh, to permit the semi-detached and the R4 will permit the uh, street townhouses on blocks 14 through 17. I'm oh, sorry, 14 through 19. Next slide, please. So the draft plan subdivision is proposed to be phased into two stages. So the first stage is block 17, 18, and 19, which include the street uh, townhouse, uh, street townhouses that are along Nickel Street, uh, and blocks 20 and 21, which include the road widening along Nickel Street. So stage two would be the extension of Temperance Street uh, in through the subject property, as well as lots one to 13 for the semi-detached residential units, and the remaining three blocks for the street townhouses. Next slide, please. All right, so as you can see here on your screen, this is um, just some 3D renderings that were provided by um, our client uh, just to give a, uh, I guess, a, a depiction of what the townhouses may look like. Again, this is just the uh, draft plan and zoning bylaw amendment stage, so 
these plans are not final. What you're seeing here is just more conceptual to get an understanding of uh, what the built form and massing uh, could look like on, on the property. So next slide, please. Same thing, uh, just different angle now again, just of these three townhouses. Next slide. All right, so in terms of the approach, um, so our team uh, looked at the public policy framework, um, which included the provincial policy statement or the PPS, as well as the Norfolk County official plan. Uh, we also considered the coordination of servicing and road upgrades along Nickel Street West, uh, given that there is a, um, a development project to the north. Um, as you can see, so that's the uh, subdivisions uh, file number on the screen. Um, also, we went through a technical review through site servicing um, to ensure that there was adequate servicing on the lands for the proposed development, a traffic impact study, which was noted earlier, uh, as well as a stage one and two archaeological assessment. And it should be noted too that we produced several development concept plans um, throughout the pre-consultation stage and uh, before the formal submission uh, in order to uh, make sure we uh, address some of the comments and concerns from uh, county staff. So the next slide. All right, so in terms of the public policy framework, um, we um, it's our opinion that the proposed development is consistent with the PPS and also conforms to the Norfolk County official plan. The subject lines are located within the Waterford urban area where the growth and development is strongly encouraged. The subject lines are designated urban residential, which, which currently permits semi-detached and townhouse dwellings in the Waterford urban area. Uh, it also meets the density requirements for both low and medium density residential development on municipal services. Uh, and it's also our opinion that the um, development makes efficient use of vacant lands within the existing urban area through context sensitive intensification. Next slide, please. So as part of the review, as I mentioned, um, we looked at the civil engineering uh, aspect. So uh, IBI group prepared a functional servicing report. Um, and again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, there was co some coordination uh, of the uh, road upgrades that are uh, planned for Nickel Street, as well as the municipal servicing, uh, which includes sanitation, um, uh, water and stormwater um, with the proposed subdivision to the north. Um, so the sub so the proposed subdivision would require the extension of the existing water main on Temperance Street in through the subdivision and uh, would connect to the existing water main on Nickel Street. The proposed sewer would also uh, connect on from Temperance Street Temperance Street to the um, existing sanitary sanitary sewer on Nickel Street. Uh, in terms of the storm water management, uh, an OGS uh, unit, an oil grid separator is also uh, will be provided at the outlet of the proposed storm sewer in order to uh, manage the uh, quality of, of storm water. Next slide. So from a transportation perspective, a, trans a traffic impact study was prepared by FR Barry and Associates. And uh, as I mentioned, this was prepared in on August 24th, uh, 2021. Uh, FR Barry and Associates also um, were involved in preparing the traffic impact study for the uh, proposed subdivision to the north. Um, so that's where some of the data um, was uh, an analysis came from and was considered. So based on uh, the report, it was uh, approximately 36 uh, vehicle trips in the morning uh, peak hour will be uh, generated and 45 vehicle trips in the afternoon peak hour will be generated. Based on their findings, uh, it was determined that there'd be no significant impact on traffic operation and safety along Nickel Street and Temperance Street. Next slide. So now for the archaeological work. Uh, so stage one and stage two uh, archaeological assessment. Up to your five minute limit here, so can we? Okay. Uh... I'll, I'll, sorry, I'll be, I'll be quick. Um, yeah, so the stage one uh, indicated that there's high potential for archaeological resources, which then prompted the stage two. So stage two was undertaken July 9th, 2021, and it was found that no archeological uh, resources were observed and uh, no further assessments were, were required or recommended. So next slide, please. Uh, so just before I move on to questions, I'd just like to say that, um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we believe that this uh, development is consistent with the PPS, conforms to the Norfolk County official plan, and uh, most importantly, uh, provides uh, housing opportunities within the existing Waterford urban area and uh, represents good planning. So thank you very much. 
Okay, and thank you. And Councillor Martin, could you uh, remind us on your question? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, my question through um, to Christian is, has the development reached the point where you're able to comment on um, additional uh, separate dwellings that are that are planned to be built within the units, uh, granny suites, those types of things? We're specifically looking at attracting uh, affordable housing here in Norfolk County. We're certainly looking to attract young families. Um, and and we know that fa families that can have, you know, generational intergenerational families living under one roof are certainly uh, appealing. So has the developer given any consideration to that? Um, at, this, at this time, uh, the developer, uh, just given that it's at the ZBA and the draft plan stage, uh, very preliminary stage right now, uh, there ha we have not um, heard of any of those considerations at the moment, but uh, that's something that we can relay to our, our client. So. Thank you. I, I certainly would encourage you to relay that to your client. Um, I can see, you know, the R2, the, the R4, it seems, you know, like a lot of density in this particular area, given that one single home could be built on it. And while we do want to increase housing stock here in Norfolk County, I think some of those other considerations are, are very attractive from, uh, from where I stand. Thank you. Councillor Huffman. Thank you, Chair Van Passen. Through you to Christian. Um, I have a few a few questions. Um, I'm the councillor for the Waterford area, so I've been inundated with um, questions from the community. Um, so do I have that leverage to ask these questions, Chairman? I yeah, I will grant you all the leeway you need. Okay, councillor. perfect. Thank you very much. Um, now looking through, I know it's preliminary, but um, what, what consultation goes on between a developer and, and the school board? in terms of making sure that there's enough space in in the local schools because obviously looking at this r2 and r4 we it would be targeted i'm assuming to families with children so where does that piece come in in terms of the school board conversation um, so the i guess related to the school board that would have been addressed during the pre-consultation stage um, any comments that we would, would have received from the school board and from what I remember and from what um, the minutes or the meeting minutes that we received, um, I don't I believe that there were no significant comments from that um, at again at the draft plan and the zoning bylaw amendment uh, stage. And I don't know if Mohammed um, has anything to say to that as well. But again, I that would have been addressed or discussed in pre-con. And from what I understand that there were no uh, significant comments at the, at the time just given that it's at the zba and draft plan stage at the moment and no no detailed designs have been presented through madam chair to the councillor uh we do circulate uh the application to all um school boards so i mean we, we receive comments from the school boards during the application process okay my next my next uh, comment i guess question slash question would be um i'm not very confident that a tuesday in august is an accurate um description of the traffic that would be um incurred on that on those roadways um the trails are very busy on the weekend the legion has activities on the weekend the waterford heritage agricultural museum has activities on the weekend i would think that um a tuesday is not the best indication of of a an accurate traffic study so i would definitely like to like to see that um i guess my my other question is is that i really need more information in terms of um the water capacity. I know we're just at the beginning stages here, but uh, getting a lot of questions from the community regarding um, the water. Um, the water situation obviously is predominant in Norfolk County, as we currently are ex experiencing in Port Dover. I certainly don't want to, as a councillor for Ward 7, put Ward 7 in a situation where we're short on uh, water um, and water treatment facilities. Um, I have a bizarre question. Um, um, what is just go back to that water? Okay, um, I think sure. Mo yeah, Muhammad, go ahead. Mohammed touched on this before, but it, this is sort of the. Maybe I'm not getting it right, so you guys can explain it to me. But uh, you know, you're looking at big picture things. It'll go back to our engineering department. They're going to do the calculations to make sure there's adequate water, sewer, 
all of those things, they're going to make sure that uh, the proper requirements are there for road reconstruction, sidewalks, all of that. And that comes later before you bring back the final report. This one is still looking at general input comments and those kind of things. Am I correct in that assumption? Um, to Madam Chair, uh, to Mr. Chair, yes. Um, at this stage, we we what we do is we do I mean develop engineering as per their requirement. Um, the applicant has to provide uh, information for water modeling. So once the water modeling done, then development engineering identify whether enough um, capacity we have. But through the through the process, there is no allocation happens based on the current instruction from EIS. Um, allocation can only be allocated when we have enough capacity, and that that is decided when uh, the development agreement process is done. So at this moment. Uh, we don't have any, I mean, we don't provide any confirmation for allocation base. Okay, sorry. Go ahead, Councilor Hoffman. Okay, no, that was good. Thank you very much for that clarification. I didn't really figure that we're at this um, step yet, but I'm trying, just trying to be as transparent as possible with the residents who have contacted me and just trying to get a, a sense of, of uh, getting some questions answered. Um, and when you when you refer to the development on the north side of Nickel Street, that may be an IBI project, but that is a different. If if I'm not mistaken, that's a different builder. Is that correct? Through Mr. Chair, uh, the development at the north side has different developer and I believe a different agent. It's I agent, not involved yeah. with that. OK, it was just that it was referenced a couple times and I just couldn't figure out why it was being referenced because that's a total separate um, project with the different um, project manager and developer and stuff. Yeah, so, OK, I just want to think to the applicant's clear. agent uh, confirmed yeah. the two developers are working together. They're going to have to interconnect some water, some sewer, yep. some roads. So they're actually trying to work together to uh, mm -hmm. save everybody a few bucks. I'm sure. yeah, we, we don't yeah. want to dig up the ground sure twice. That this, the pipes are sized correctly and all those things. So there was a reason for that clarification that it's two separate developers. There's there's a point to be made there. Um, okay, I think that are those are my questions for today. Um, unless you would have any as as the um, the agent, do you have any idea in terms of um, if any units have been sold? Even though it would be very early in the process, someone had told me that there was possibly some sold. I'm thinking that's kind of out of the line question for the agent on the development part, but uh, yeah, it's always worth a shot. <laughs> yeah, so, sorry. Yeah, at the moment, I I, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure uh, at the moment. So. Thank you very much. Now, Mayor Chop, I noticed that you had your hand up previously, but it's back down. Did you have a question for? Yeah. I just was going to provide some clarification on this, uh, the water situation and in terms of the chief building official, you know, not being able to issue uh, a permit in any case in, in the event that there wasn't water or the potential for holds being placed on the application. Um, but I, I think it's covered. You know, the, the only counter argument you can use there is if you're never going to grow Waterford, um, at any point in the future, then you could have the argument that you want to place one home on that lot, um, saying that we're not we're not going to ever increase water capacity there. But we know that those plans are obviously already in the in the works to bring additional capacity. Hey, any other questions for the uh, agent? I will make one other comment though. Uh, welcome to Norfolk County and it's sand plain. And I noticed that you have all the topsoil bulldozed off that. And when it gets hot and dry the first of May and a windy day, uh, you better make sure there's a water tanker on hand because uh, the dust tends to blow, does not, not come from it. So. Well, see, no more questions. Uh, does anybody wish? Oh, sorry. Is there any members of the public that uh, are on uh, on with us, Mr. Deputy Clerk? Okay, seeing none. Then, is there anyone who would wish to move the staff recommendation or propose an alternative? Councillor Columbus, 
Councillor Taylor seconds. All in favor? That is carried. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. OK, our next report is CD 22-031, ZNPL 2021-1364, and DMPL 2021-1372. An application has been received to amend the existing resort residential zone by adding a site-specific special provision to permit smaller lot area, larger lot coverage, and building height for a proposed new vacation home. The application is also associated with a deeming bylaw application. And Mohammed, uh, would you be able to present this report as well? Yes, Mr. Chair. Through Mr. Chair to the Council, uh, this is a zoning bylaw amendment application for conversion of an existing semi detached dwelling into a triplex building. The subject land is municipally known as 739 and 741 Norfolk Street North and located at the north of Simcoe urban boundary. The surrounding area is predominantly low residential. Um, with few instit institutional and commercial buildings. The subject land is designated as urban residential and currently zoned as residential type two with permits um, that permits semi detached and duplex buildings. As I mentioned, the proposal is to convert the semi detached building into a triplex building. Uh, this will require to change the zoning from R2 zone to R3 zone. A part of the basement will be renovated to convert the third dwelling unit. A total of six parking space will be required as per zoning bylaw. The proposal includes one parking space at the front yard uh, for which a special provision will be required. Currently, no parking is permitted in the front yard. We received a planning justification report in support of the development um, that supports that the existing I mean, that suggests that existing private service have adequate capacity for the proposed three units. This will be further reviewed through the technical review and uh, at building permit stage. Staff will provide a recommendation report once we receive all technical comments. And that's all I have to offer. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Mohammed. Are there any questions for staff? Getting off easy on this one. So we have the applicant's agent, uh, Adam Moot, representing Land Pro. Would you be making a presentation or just to answer questions? Uh, good afternoon, uh, Chair Van Passen, committee members, and staff. Uh, Mohammed's provided a thorough review of the application. Uh, I have nothing to add, but can answer any questions uh, should they, any councillors have any. Any questions for the uh, applicant's agent? Seeing none. We'll move on and uh, does anyone wish to move the staff recommendation or propose an alternative? Councillor Martin, Councillor Rabbit seconds. Any discussion? All in favor? That is carried. It all went that easy. Thanks, committee members. Thank you and thanks to the staff. And unless I'm missing something, Mr. Deputy Clerk, uh, that's the end of our agenda, is it not? That, that is the end of our agenda. A motion to adjourn will okay. conclude this meeting. Could I have a mover and seconder, Councillor Michelli and Councillor Huffman? Motion to adjourn. All in favor? That is carried. Thank you, everyone.